Hey, Aaron. Hey, Autumn. Hi, hey, Jen. Jen. Nice Welcome to, to Portland. Nice to meet you in person. So excited to get your email about rain gardens. I think it's an important topic. So why don't you tell me a little bit about your lot? We moved in a year ago yesterday, and we have a little under a quarter acre here to wow. deal with. That's a lot of that's a lot of land for it, this area. There's a lot of land for this area, and it's all grass, and we are looking for ways to reduce our footprint. Okay. Yeah, because sometimes grass is like just green asphalt and Absolutely. a lot of water runs off. Absolutely. And Jim, Portland's climate is really changing. We both moved here about 20 years ago and it was just constant rain all the time. Mm -hmm. And now with our changing climate, we're just getting a lot more dry days, long stretches of really hot weather and um, started thinking about how do we use this space in a way that is going to make plants grow, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. use water well, um, so that we're not watering all the time. Um, and so we got interested in rain gardens mm -hmm. um, and we are looking for help in how to install a rain garden. Well, I have a friend who lives in the area and she works for the Soil and Water Conservation District and she is on board, happy to help. We've already talked about possibilities here. So I want right. you to come meet her. Let's Fantastic. meet her. All right. All right. Hey, Kathy. Hey. So good to see you. Thanks for coming. I wanted you to meet Aaron and Autumn, and they want to talk about water conservation. Hi, Hi. Kathy. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Nice to meet you, too. Thanks for having me over. So as a Soil and Water Conservation District, we're here to help folks manage their soil and stormwater resources. And on a house this size, in a one-inch rainstorm, you typically see about 900 gallons of water flow off and so it's always good to find a, a way to, to manage that and, and to, to a place to put the water essentially so that it doesn't flow off and into the street and picking up all kinds of oils and dusts and things like that and making their way to the, to the stream or, or water treatment facility. We're talking 33,000 gallons of water per year that we can use on this right. landscape. So and Kathy, do we determine the size of the garden based on the size of the roof? That's right. We'll take a walk around and identify where your downspouts are coming down. Okay. And that's where we'll figure that out. I have an idea. Why don't we look at the front foundation, determine where those downspouts are, and then we'll figure out a game plan. All right. So it looks like there's just one. <laughs> <laughs> that right? makes it easy, doesn't it? This is a great location for a downspout, actually. And what would be really great is if we could just put in a river rock creek and we could just move the water from that downspout and direct it right to a rain garden. And from here, where should we put the rain garden once we divert it from here? Well, some of the good rules are, you know, it needs to be at least 10 feet away from the house if you have a basement. Two, if you don't have a basement, needs to be at least three feet away from like driveways and streets and things like that. And at least two or three feet away from any sort of pathways because it's gonna be a bit of a dip. And so you wanna have it in a place where people aren't just gonna accidentally step off into it. That makes sense. And, and then... considering all those specifications, how big are we wanting to make this garden? Well, you know, Jen and I were looking at the, the topos online and you can use a tool to, to measure the, the area of your roof. This area here was around 350 square feet. Yep, yep. So one of the rules for the, for the rain garden is you want at least 10% of, of area that, that will be able to capture that water. So, for 350 square feet, you'll want at least 35 square feet. The other thing that we need to think about is how well the soil is going to absorb that water. And so the first thing we'll want to do is to do a percolation test, which is basically just digging a hole and adding some water and seeing how quickly that water drains. What's the ideal drainage rate? The ideal drainage rate of a percolation test, you want to get at least a half an inch an hour. Because if, if it doesn't drain properly, you're going to want to rethink where you're going to put the rain garden. Otherwise, you're just going to have overflow and then it's just going to flow out into the street. All right, our soil test looks good. The percolation rate is three inches per hour. The thing we're going to do next is place the downspout redirect to put the water to our rain garden. All right, let's start by marking out the shape of the rain garden. Mm -hmm. 
the anatomy of a rain garden is such that you, you want it to slope steadily. And then the center area is going to be your deepest. One, two, three. Along with digging the basin, we're going to be digging out the river rock bed. Next, we'll incorporate a four-way soil mix into the existing soil. We're also making sure we don't compact the soil. Keeping the soil loose will encourage water filtration and allow the plants easy root growth. Now we're gonna lay landscape fabric down the trench as a barrier between the soil and the river rock. We're gonna cut it roughly to size before we lay the, the rock down over it. The reason we've chosen river rock is one, because we're mimicking a, a small creek, but two, River rock doesn't compact. All the rounded edges allow water to easily flow in between the rocks and it won't ever over time compact. All right, so now it's time to plant. We've chosen a mixture of deciduous and evergreen, native trees and shrubs and ground covers to fill this space to help with a little bit of privacy, to also add some visual interest, and to add some wildlife habitat. A lot of these things are flowering and fruiting. They also will soak up all the water in the wintertime, but can also withstand drought during the summertime. We're gonna use the old sod that we pulled up and place it around the edge just to give it a little lift that will hold the water. All right, and finally, we're gonna just put the mulch down. We wanna put it down just lightly to hold the moisture in and add a little organic matter. You'll wanna keep watering through the summer months while they get established. After that, they'll take care of themselves. So what do you guys think? We really love excited. it. Yeah. It is better than we could have imagined and we're super stoked about it. Well, this is a fantastic project because you're addressing water conservation and keeping your water on site for the ground recharge. So love that and you, great job on this whole design work and plan. It's, it's function and form and it's beautiful as well. So absolutely my pleasure. Yeah, nice job. Kathy, all thank right. you so much for all of your expertise and your wisdom in helping to guide this project. It's awesome. And thank you, Jen, for coming all the way out here to help us. Yeah, my thank pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.